Good afternoon, everybody. My name's Karen Nyholm. I'm the Acting Assistant Commissioner for Eastern Region. Thanks for your time this afternoon. Uh, what I'll do is I'll take you through a chronology of the events uh, in the northeastern area over the past 48 hours, um, which led to this morning's incident, and I'll then have you take some questions from you. Uh, so on Monday uh, around midday, police attended at an address in Catandra West, which is just uh, outside of Shepparton, in relation to a firearms prohibition order. Um, at that address, police were confronted by a person by the name of Stanley Turvey, and at that stage he had a firearm. He discharged that firearm uh, up into the air, and as a result, police retreated. Police subsequently took a chase after him as he uh, left the scene in a vehicle. Uh, during that time, uh, police rolled a divisional van. At a later point, we had um, uh, Stanley Turvey uh, drive at police and then later subsequently crashed that vehicle. He stole a vehicle and we then alleged that he uh, has then taken a person hostage and uh, at gunpoint required that person to drive to an address in Finlay, New South Wales. Police were in contact with the New South Wales Police throughout this. Uh, anticipating the potential for a cross-border incident. As a result of that, police uh, notified New South Wales who then undertook a cordon and contain of that area. Uh, he was unfortunately not arrested at that time and fled from the area. Uh, since that time, police have been undertaking searches throughout New South Wales and Victoria. And yesterday around midday, uh, we alleged that he was involved in an armed robbery uh, and took a further stolen vehicle, um, uh, which was a stolen ute, um, and again um, uh, used his firearm in relation to that robbery with an innocent member of the public. Uh, this morning, um, as a result of a lot of intelligence that's been gathered over the past 48 hours, police have been uh, undertaking uh, searches of areas, and as a result of intelligence, uh, police attended out at an address out at Ardmona. Our special operations group have attended there and uh, whilst approaching the residents have been involved in a matter with, um, with Stanley Turvey and at that time he's produced a firearm. Now I'm not going to go into the details of what's actually occurred at that location because obviously that's um, part of the coronial investigation that will now take place but um, you can conclude that police have involved, um, uh, police have taken um, uh, action that's required um, to shoot um, Stanley Turvey and unfortunately he is now deceased. Uh, as a result of that being a fatal police shooting, uh, the Homicide Squad will now undertake an investigation and uh, on behalf of the coroner will investigate the circumstances of what has taken place. That investigation will be overseen by the Professional Standards Command area of Victoria Police and those matters will be reported to Senior Executive and to the State Coroner. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the members of the public um, throughout the northeast of um, Victoria and New South Wales who have been subject to some of the criminal activity of uh, Stanley Turvey over the past 48 hours. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the impact on those communities, both the individual victims that were involved, the witnesses that witnessed what took place, and the broader community. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the work that's been undertaken by Victoria Police and supported by New South Wales Police to undertake this investigation uh, with an attempt to actually arrest him and take him safely into custody. Um, it's fair to say that there's been a lot of police involved um, and in relation to the public, um, we really appreciate the assistance that the public have provided to us um, in, in assisting us in this investigation. Um, I'm happy to take some questions, but I would just like to remind you that as a result of it being a coronial investigation, I won't go into the specific details um, of the shooting that's taken place this morning, but otherwise happy to take any other questions you may have. Just Yeah, my understanding is that um, the police were um, uh, presented with a threat and as a result of that, have taken some action. Um, I'm not going to go into the specifics of that, so I can't, and, and that will be part of the investigation. Yeah, I understand that there was a person there. I don't know the relationship to that person at the moment. We were hearing reports that there may be links to outlaw motorcycle gangs. Is there any confirmation on that, Mr. Two? 
yeah, I'm not sure of all of the associations that he has, so I can't confirm whether or not he has any connection or involvement with any other motorcycle gangs at this stage. Was the person on the property injured in any way? No. Did they witness the incident? Were they outside at the time as well? Uh, I can't go into that detail. Yeah, I, I can't talk about the intelligence of what led us there, but it's fair to say that we had an indication that potentially that was one location where we might find him. The ute that was stolen from Yarrawonga that ended up in Tatura, are you able to tell us if police were able to track that, had a track on it, that vehicle? Um, no, I don't believe that we were able to track it, um, but I know that we, that we certainly have located that vehicle. Is your footprint being found at the address or did you get there by a car? I don't know how he got to that address. Was he by himself? No, there was another person at that location. As in at, at Mona? Yeah, looking at the time. Oh, I'm not going to go into the detail of the specifics of where he was or what he was doing at that location. Are you able to tell us anything about what happened in Tatura yesterday with the finding of the, that stolen from Yarrawonga? Yeah, so, so as a result of the um, stolen vehicle being recovered, there was obviously searches of that particular area at that time. Um, again, referring to the intelligence that we had, there was various locations where we were undertaking searches to try and find him. Um, and unfortunately, we didn't turn him up last night when we were able to find him. Um, I can indicate that obviously we had contact with his family and some associates. Um, and certainly, I know, and certainly I saw some of the broadcasting, um, that was our intention to try and get him to surrender himself um, into state custody. How many police have been involved in this operation? And obviously something like this takes a huge toll, whether police were directly there today or not. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know the specific numbers. I do know that um, poli local police up here across um, the Shepparton and Wangaratta areas have been involved. Um, we've also had specialist support services up here from Melbourne, including the Special Operations Group. Um, and it's a fair machinery to get all of those police coordinated um, and resources to do that. So I, I don't know the exact numbers, but it has been a big operation. Um, the risks um, of, of the um, the risk of the conduct and the behaviour and the serious violent offending um, it was really important that we um, uh, took him into safe custody as soon as we could. Can we just confirm two things that you said earlier in the chronology? Going back to the Kandra, I believe yeah. at a press conference yesterday it was said that the police vehicle wasn't rammed and that it crashed separately. It was still looking for him, but he wasn't involved. Can you tell us what's happened? Yeah, no, no, sure. Um, I don't know the specifics, I'm still working through that. Um, it's correct, the vehicle wasn't rammed, but the circumstances of the vehicle, um, the police van um, rolling, I don't know the specifics of it, but it's fair to say that it was, it, it was part of the operation of trying to actually take him into custody. And the man who drove him to Finley, that person, we were under the impression yesterday from the press conference that that man was held hostage to drive him over the border, asked to drive to a certain location. Can you confirm that that's the case rather than it was a stolen car that got someone else? Okay, my understanding was that it was a member of the public um, that was taken hostage um, and forced to drive him to the middle. So he already stole the car first or it was that member of the public's car? Uh, I'm not quite sure of that. I believe it was actually that, that member of the public's car. And so just further clarification on the police rollover, so not a ramming, but because of his driving at the police car, it caused them to swerve and lose control. No, sorry, separate. So as part of it, there was various police involved in the um, response to try and obviously take him into custody. Um, and I'm not sure of the, the specifics of the location of the van at the time, but it's fair to say that the van was involved in some activity, but I'm not suggesting that um, Turby drove at that particular van or was involved in any ramming of that vehicle at that time. So still at this stage, that car that did roll over, it was just in the shoot of looking for Mr Turby and lost control. So, yeah, so it, it, um, in terms of investigation, so any time that police are involved in a pursuit or an evade, we will undertake a specific review of that. So whilst all of this will be part of a coronial investigation, that also will be subject to um, a pursuit review as well. And that's the, that way we'll understand exactly what's taken place um, and the specifics of it. So we'll understand a bit more about it then. Can you tell us when you were saying about you said that the police car was involved in that one that rolled. Yeah. Um, and then you said, and there was another car that you drove at. Was that a separate police car? Yes, that's correct. Where did that happen? Uh, I don't know the specifics of the locations. Uh, yes. was, was that sort of that before he'd gotten to you and my kind of time frame? It, it, was, it was subsequent to him fleeing the Catandra West address. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 We've been, sorry, we've been told by uh, people that we have been asking to stay with certain people around the area. Is there any further investigations to get him out of the car with him? 
Um, I'm not aware of anything at this point in time, but obviously um, subject to any kind of criminal offending that's occurred, what we'll do is we'll go through the chronology um, and make sure that we're comfortable that any um, offences as to how we actually account for those, um, what what has taken place. So if there's any other criminal offending or harbouring or anything of that kind, we certainly would be looking into that. Has Thank his associates been helpful in locating him and keeping police up to date on his um, I'm not going to go into the intelligence that we had in relation to how we found him. Um, it's fair to say that we would make inquiries into all avenues um, of information that we could find to find him. Being involved in an incident like this is obviously traumatic for police. Can you just tell us a little bit about the sure. concern for those well, the, the officers well, as well? As Absolutely. Um, so in relation to any police, so police that all the police that have been involved in this search will be impacted um, by both the search and the outcome of that. Um, policing is a really, really tough thing. It's a very rewarding job to have, um, but at, at times like this, um, it obviously is something that um, it's important that we take care of those members and, and we help them to take care of themselves um, because it does have an impact. Um, this is not the outcome that we would have wanted today. Um, we wanted to take them into safe custody, um, but it's fair to say we need to do um, what it is to protect the public, protect ourselves um, uh, in that situation. So um, my focus will be on looking after our police members um, from both Melbourne, the specialists that came up, and our locals um, to, I guess, rehabilitate and make sure that they're good to do their role um, and also assure the community um, of their safety moving forward. And those victims have obviously been traumatised as well. Yeah. Our focus will be on supporting those victims um, and has been since they've reported the crimes as well um, and making sure that they've got connections to all the support that they need um, to, to take them through that traumatic period um, and moving forward. Just confirming, was Mr Turby a Tandra West man or was his home location somewhere else? Good question. I don't actually know the answers to that. I believe he was from Katandra, but I'm not sure how long he'd been a resident for. The original search warrant for the firearm order, is that? So he was there, but that's not where he lives, is that right? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure of his home address. I just know that that's when, um, I guess, um, this 48 hours of defending kicked off, um, that he was at, at that address at that time. Was that warrant, was it for Mr Turvey or was it for another person that was at that property and he just happened to be there at the time? Yeah, it wasn't a warrant, it was actually but, a, fire, so the, the, yeah, so a firearm protection order. And still believe that that firearm was Yeah, um, look, if that's the case, um, my understanding, I certainly have been briefed on the fact that um, at that residence, he was there with that firearm. Yeah. And just in terms of, I suppose, what, what happens from here, as well as the integrity of the that will the, will the Melbourne police have been quite a while, or what happens in the guys? Yeah, we go through, um, there's various policies in relation to critical incidents of this kind, um, and whilst I won't go into all of the detail of that, um, it's fair to say that, um, uh, all the police that will be in, have been involved will be making statements, um, whether that's immediately today, this afternoon, um, or in coming days. They, they're required to take their notes, um, and we're required to undertake certain processes. Um, so some will be here for a while, and some will head back later this afternoon. He's been in prison before. Are you able to say what that was for and when he was released? No, I'm not going to go into his criminal history. I think out of respect to the family at this stage and acknowledging that he has a family, I think it's best to, to, to leave that at this point in time um, and simply talk about probably what's happened in the last 48 hours. Do you want to say anything to him about family or to, to the family members about him someone's been in touch with them? Yeah, so the next of kin has been notified. Um, I'd probably like to say and acknowledge that um, uh, to any family member that loses anyone in these circumstances will be traumatised um, and I acknowledge that and I'm sure that, um, that there'll be a lot of um, uh, trauma that they'll have to work through and certainly we'll be making sure that we provide that um, if they're open to that um, and willing we're, we're here to do that. The coroner's office is fantastic at providing um, uh, support for, to people for um, traumatic circumstances but certainly I'd like to acknowledge the impact that this would have on his family. Um, absolutely, they've lost a loved one, so um, you know it's not lost on us the impact on them. Yeah. I suppose just to get a general question of how significant this was, three day man um, went into New South Wales. Can you give us an idea as to the last time we saw something of this significance or as a point of comparison? Uh, probably in my time, I'd say the last one was in relation to there was a hunt in relation to, I'm not sure if it was two brothers or a, a, um, back in about 2015, I think it was. 
um, we had a hunt that went across a couple of states at that time. Um, similar sort of thing um, uh, across the country areas of Victoria, um, the manhunt that took place, I'd say probably 2015. So this is the most significant manhunt in regional Victoria since basically that? Yeah, it, it, to my understanding, yes. Did that one at the time, did they go through the Shepparton area too from memory? I, no. I don't recall. I think the local police might be able to tell me the answer to that. Stockos. 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 That's it. Yeah. 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 Just stop that. There's been a huge police approach at the time. That's chasing that time. Yeah, well, I guess look, there's lots of reasons for that. At the end of the day, um, hoarding and containing someone, you know, it's it's um, it's um something that's quite challenging. Uh, it sounds easy, but, but from the time that police actually are notified of Sighting. By the time that the police get there, um, despite the fact that we had lots around, um, sometimes even that minute or two is enough for him. Um, noting that he um, obviously was in a position that he didn't want to be taken into custody, so um, it can be that split second of that minute, um, and that's all that it takes. Um, and obviously, um, you know, whether it's been driving his own cars or other cars, getting into cars, getting on foot, um, that's that's how you can slip, slip the net pretty quickly. And, and just Uh, I don't. We'll be working through that as part of the investigation. Uh, I'm not sure. I just know that we had intelligence this morning um, that took us to that address. Were the public, did you get many, um, I know you widely asked for anyone who cited him to be calling into this area, was there many tip-offs from the public throughout these whole three days? Um, I, I won't go into numbers um, or, or details of it, um, but you know, with anything of this, we've always got members of the public that are, are happy to assist us with what they've seen. Um, and I think that's part of them being responsible um, in terms of their own protection of their community as well. Um, so yeah, no, we won't go into the quantity or the, the quality, but certainly we did have um, members of the public contact us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please travel safely back. Thank um, you. You don't need to record it, but please travel safely because our road toll is really significant and I'd hate to think that you were going to land on the road. So travel safely. And Thank thanks you. for your support, all of you. Thank you. Thank thanks you. for your reporting. Thank you. Guys, this car's got to back out.